coffee looks weird. Well, it's, there's not much milk, is there? Mm. Not very nice. It's fine. Yeah. It's definitely decaf. It's definitely decaf. Okay. I mean, you don't need full... It's not full bar. Yeah. Mine's full bar. Okay. We've started, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in, it's Sunday morning Sit back, relax, we'll talk it through Through with the baddest and you Good morning! Welcome to with the Bennett's BWTB. This is coming at you from this recording studio, which is actually a living room. We're sat on some chairs. We're very comfortable. We hope you are too. Uh, you are listening to a BWTB production. My name is Gemma. My husband, his name is Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This is getting I mean, we, these intros are becoming like you're, oh. you're, you're riffing, riffing, riffing. But you need to have something pre prepared. Um, Just say hello, good morning, everybody. I hope you're well out there. Um, it's so good to be joining you yeah. on this Sunday morning. Uh, I hope you're having a lovely day. You may have taken the dog for a oh, walk. Oh, this is dog, dog shit. This dog... is dog shit. Oh, let me Stop finish. This, this is rubbish. Finish. The dog may have taken you. For a walk. Yeah. You may be going to the park with the mm, children. Mm. You may be going to park the children. Uh, you may be doing a painting. You may be painting, decorating, washing, ironing, sleeping, running, playing football. Right. Or which, abseiling. Right. Shh, shh, shh. Which intro do you prefer? Do you prefer that absolutely crap intro I, from listen, him? I think you'll find that was BBC or Radio 4. Would you rather have this? Good morning, everybody. This is the BWTB pod coming live at you from the live studios of BWTB Towers. Mm -hmm. See, that was way better. You look like you should have a baseball cap on backwards. I don't driving know. a four by four. Anyway, good morning. Yeah. How are you? That's the point. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. We'll see you the whole day through. Good morning. Good morning to you. So, um... <laughs> That said, that said, you do that an awful lot. Ah, oh, it's my favorite thing. What the conscience? That conscience. said, I think you say that, that said. said. That said, it's because I I channel my inner Melanie Melita Melita from the caravan out. of love. Checking out, guys. Checking out, guys. It's on YouTube. It's very funny. It's very very Close funny. Closest we've come to a caravan. Oh, blooming heck! Yeah, yeah. People saying, "Get the caravan, get the caravan." We need uh, to get the caravan. No, They're right. Life's so hard and oh. things are so expensive. We're in a cost of living crisis. We, oh, do you dear. know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. We, we Can we budget for a caravan? I don't know. Maybe it don't have, oh. I did say to the Sphere the other day, because we passed a Ferrari and she said, oh, yeah. oh, that Ferrari's amazing, Daddy. I said, yes. And she said, how much is it worth? I said, probably about 180000 yeah. She went, can we have one? I said, well, actually, if we sold the house, yeah. you, couldn't, you couldn't, you and your sister could have one. Yeah. And... You know, but we'd have to live in. But a, we'd have to live in a tent, and she yeah. went. Mm. Mm. We're we'd thinking have, about, but we'd have a Ferrari. She's obsessed with cars at the minute, and she I is. used to be when I was a kid. So she'll say to me, "Oh, mummy, that's an Audi." So she's learned all like the badges and stuff. That's an Audi. How much is it worth? And I'd be like, "She'll be because she would say, how do you know it's an Audi?' She because the drivers are wanker, mummy. No, that's what she said she said they're right up our backs. How much is it worth? And I'll say, Pooh, I don't know, forty thousand. Uh, mummy, mummy, how much is that one worth? That's a Mercedes, isn't it? I was like, yeah, that's probably worth a bit more. But she's not got the concept that there's makes and makes of cars and also models. So she just thinks that all Audis are like 50 grand or 100 yeah. grand. Or What we need to do on a Sunday mm. is take her to the car supermarket. Yeah. Oh, she'd love it. She'd That'd be like it. a day out. She'd a genuinely park. love it. And yeah. I think that's what we'll do. That's a, that's yeah. a get little, bring a little bit of joy into your kid's life and then we'll end up coming out with a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or a caravan. Yeah. Ooh. I'm not taking you around low oh. caravans. If I take you around that I caravan... I want to go to that caravan no. there, NEC thing. No, oh, come no, on. no, because what happens that, there... to a sweet No, shop. it's like taking a recovering crack addict into a crack den. Yeah. 
It really is. And it's I'm not, not going to do it because you'll come in there, you'll smell the caravans, oh. you'll be in there just going, oh, it's so good. Look at this. Yeah. Look at, has it got a fold down there? And the salesman will be sniffing around going, yeah. she likes caravans. He'll be on to me. Oh, oh, yeah, well, we could look at a plan if you like. I don't need to commit to it today. Leave us alone. There's no exits. There's I no know. way out. I know. Every woman, every man, join the caravan of love. Stand Only 20 up, grand up, on a Sunday. Up. I've got no mortgage because we can't afford to pay it back because you bought a caravan. <laughs> I feel like I'm mourning the 90s. Yeah. I sent you a WhatsApp saying... this. No, but this, this, we've talked about this before. It's nostalgia. No, but didn't I send you a WhatsApp saying, do you ever regret anything in your life? Oh, I ignored that one, didn't I? Yeah. I didn't reply, did I? Well, I'm answering do you, you know now. When I, do you know when I got that text, I was like, oh, fucking hell, here we go again. It's because I was in a hot room in Cardiff alone. Right, because... I, What's I, I the wrong with it? Because I can't be doing with that. What? Where you go, do you regret anything or do you wish you'd done this? It's, for me, it's a pointless exercise. What, reflection? Yeah, and regretting. You can't, it, there's nothing you can do about it. So what's the point in dwelling on what you didn't I'm, do? I'm not, I'm not saying the decisions I make, I don't, I've not things are great. Because, no, but. I'm uh, not happy. No, what but I'm on say- a serious note, I do, I regret for you, your life. <laughs> <laughs> that is the bleakest sentence you've ever said to me. <laughs> I regret for you your life <laughs> no what i meant was <laughs> please elaborate because <laughs> i just feel i feel so depressed no, but what i was gonna say is i mean this is going a bit serious now but we've talked about this before scott suffered badly during his degree with his mental health um because you basically it's hard to put this in it i'm trying to say this in a balanced way you work really, really hard, and that's not. Is it a bad thing? No, it's yeah. no. Well, uh, yes and no. No, but the thing is, you do work really, really hard. You're really dedicated. All of these qualities are fantastic in you, um, and you, you are really bright as well. And you, you did really well in your, really well in your degree. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Languages? Yeah. So <laughs> the thing is, is that, but unfortunately, that came at a price with you. So it's not like you could just cruise through your degree. You work so hard that you missed out on doing the good stuff. And I was thinking about this a lot. When you sent your text through, I was like, you know what? I really hope... Because you actually said, I want our girls to not take things so seriously. Yeah. And I was like, God, yeah. I mean, that's my philosophy totally. But I thought are you going to be able to deliver on what you're saying there? Because you struggle with that now in terms of like, I think you do take life still very seriously. And sometimes you take stuff with the girls very seriously. And I'm always the person who has to rein you back in and go, look, there's a way of doing this. There's a way of encouraging, but also not putting pressure on. There's a way of making sure they are diligent and hardworking, but at the same time, they have a balance and they don't necessarily have to. It's not everything. It's not the be all and end all. So it's about getting that balance. And I think you do struggle to get the balance and you always have. And that's why it's a shame that you look back on university because we met, by the way, listeners who don't know this, we met about three weeks into our courses So in 1997, when we started our degrees, we met each other and we were together. We've been together ever since. So basically we're together throughout our four year courses at at Loughborough. And um, I look back on my university years with nothing but just fondness. It was just such a good time. And I know we had a year apart because I was in Germany and you were in Longton. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, so contrary. Yeah, so but you know, I don't think you found that in a too tiny flat. But with yeah, prostitutes walking yeah, the up flat and down. wasn't a great bit. But you no. actually enjoyed your year out, didn't you? You did yeah. enjoy working at, yeah. at GDA. But um, yeah, so but your time, particularly your final year, maybe your first year and your second year wasn't so bad. Um, but your final year particularly was hard, wasn't it? Traumatic. Yeah, I, I think you look back on it with fondness. Your university. Yeah. I look at. 
I look at it a bit like I was in a Russian gulag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is quite sad. It is because it's ultimately, because it. that was the time to yeah, be yeah. free. Well, I mean, also as a teacher, I mean, but self I could, I could potentially. I mean, I don't know if I. I think I am offering the right advice to students because I try to give a very balanced opinion about about workload, basically, and especially because we've got our own daughter who's you know she'll before we know it she'll be in year eight in September yeah and um you know my attitude is always and I think any adult will say this that of course we want you to do your best of course we want you to achieve but when we say achieve it doesn't necessarily mean getting a nine in biology um we've had the girls reports this week um and again what makes us the proudest parents is that they are kind and they are happy. Yeah. And that is, for me, number one. Yeah. And you, number yeah. one. Um, and then we don't know what they'll do in life, but what we do hope is ultimately they are happy. Uh, do, do you know what the real tragedy for me, I think, yeah. is? Is I've never been able to separate my character from what I'm doing. And it's my character that's always made it yeah. worse. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I've never been able to fully separate those two but don't you so, find that weird uh, that, that, but yeah. that's the st- that's the reason for the success and the regret yeah yeah so do you find it odd though that at the age of 43 you still struggle to rec i mean because i think sometimes you do recognize in yourself the things that make you perhaps uptight or whatever yeah but yet you can't always control it because i fundamentally don't believe you can change your wiring I think it's really hard. I think I, well, I think it's cognitive and it's behavioural. And I think to actually do it would be... But a, surely a like, psychologist would say you can control it and you can... It doesn't mean that you... You can't necessarily change your wiring, but you can recognise it and then try and work on well, it. I, I found at the moment I am having pangs of like wishing it was in the i was in the 90s again yeah and i don't know where that's coming from is but that like regret though mourning the 90s like you no to i redo think do it or yeah possibly but also i never regret us meeting uh but i just feel like the 90s felt more i don't know maybe it is because there was, it felt sort of less competitive or less like I felt like the nineties was more innocent. Mm. I still stand by it that I, I feel like the the night is the nostalgia of that era mm. is way more safe and simple than yeah. where we are now. Mm. And I think people were happier. Yeah. On the whole. Yeah. I think they were. Yeah. I think it's madness mm. where we are now. Yeah. I, I don't know. I but I do I do actually what is actually interesting is I do feel like you're right in that. I didn't get the most out of things and, and uh, because of who I am and what I actually, it's gone I don't very know. serious. I don't know. It? No, that sounds a bit like, that sounds a bit negative. It's not, you know, you did have good times. Yeah. You did have, but your work, I don't know. It. You could never have just thought, I think it would have been totally alien to you to just think, Oh, sod it! You know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that last little bit for this thing. That's enough. Yeah. It, that'll be all right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if I don't get 100. percent Don't you think it's yeah. weird that I've picked another job where there is no end, there is never enough, and I have to produce something? It's like yeah. I'm attracted to that. Yeah. Masochistic. Well, I think you could masochistic side of no, but I think you could probably people listening to this would say that they, it there is a sort of. A yin, not a yin, a love hate relationship with certain things in their life. Like, like you're saying, it's an area, a part of your character that you you find sometimes is negative, but yet you you um, excel in it. Hmm. So what I mean is by that, that'll be the same for a lot of people. Yeah. So what I mean by that is like sometimes I can feel a bit overwhelmed with being too busy, and yet I like being busy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like. I'm my own worst enemy sometimes. And I think we can all say that, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I always used to, like my mum would say, please do not put your hand up for anything else. Do not say yes to anything I else. I mean, you, you, you're the queen of double booking. Double booking. I but double booked myself this week. I had to text Soph and say, I'm really sorry. We can't come on Thursday. I, can I, I come on Friday? I, I, I still recall the time you went to someone's picnic for about seven minutes. I know. <laughs> 
You walked in, you went, hi, everyone. Can I have a volivant? Brilliant. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Literally pointless. Ridiculous. Because you Absolutely double booked yourself. Ridiculous. But you are a people pleaser. And that's a strength and a weakness. I think there'll be people out there yeah. who have got those same things. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the bottom line is, uh, is that you are the best thing in my life and everything else. Oh, God. I'm just... You know I can't bear compliments. It's awful. Uh, yeah. Thanks, though. <laughs> and you're right. I am. You are <laughs> the best thing. <laughs> I went on that podcast to discuss yeah. the false economy it podcast. Go? It was very good. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. And some of the things I wanted to ask you. Go on then. Because they talked about what your best purchase was. I said it was this house. Yeah. Because do you remember how that happened? Yeah. Wasn't that a weird moment yeah. looking back? Yeah. You knew this house existed. Well, no, 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 it was just how it all worked out. So we'd gone to Loughborough University, which obviously isn't that far away from Nottingham. Then we both got jobs after university and we literally got a map, didn't we? Yeah. And just put a point in between the two jobs and that ended up being Swaddling Coat at the time. Which is a weird name for a place. It, it is, sounds made but up. But you know what? I loved Swad. Swad. Loved it. Bloody loved Swadders. it. Swadders. Swadders. So we lived in Swaddling Coat and then... Um, I had I, a ski centre. Always an yeah, odd decision, yeah. that. It's great though, isn't it? It's good no, but fun. I never looked at those people and thought, do you know what they, they these need? people need? Bit of skiing. Bit of skiing. In the middle of Derbyshire. Yeah. So, um, and then we ended up getting new jobs. So you ended up working in Nottingham at a design consultancy, FSW. And then I ended up working at a school in Ilkeston. So our jobs brought us more this way. So, um, of course, it seemed natural to look at a place where I knew mm. And you're right, I did know this street. I knew this street existed and I always loved the houses on it. But I, Yeah, and I said that the thing what we did with yeah. this is we sort of won a little victory. Because you remember... Well, I said, a... let's go and drive past it. Yeah, and he was in the garden. Yeah, he was in the garden at the time. We, we saw it was on the market and um, we pulled up outside and we had absolutely no intention because we knew the etiquette wouldn't be to knock on somebody's door if they're on the market and say, can we have a look? You have to have an appointment, etc." But he came over to us and he was like, can I help? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I said, it's just, we saw this is on the market. So we just, just thought we'd drive past and have a look. He's like, come in, have a look round. He was off the grid. What I loved as well yeah. is there'd only ever been one family in here. Yeah. It had been untouched. And I loved what Gemma does in that situation. She laid it on thick. My yeah. God, it was brilliant. She was yeah. like, yeah, my family are from around here and we're just, we're looking at somewhere to start a yeah. family. And yeah. we, Gemma turned it on like she was in the Waltons. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? We just want somewhere for the children to play. And, and he was like, are you thinking of starting a family? Yes, we'd love to start a family here, but we just, we want to, well, this has only been ever one family, this house. We'd like to continue that tradition. Yeah. Your beautiful performance. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, we, and then I think there was two people who what, bid for the one house. One of them was a developer. And was he, it really? Yeah, How do you want, know that? He wanted to get in, get done. But um, the owner of the house said he'd like it to go to us. Yeah. So, we beat the estate I don't know agents. How, did he actually have a say in that? I well, suppose so. You can say who I think you want to sell your house to. Another brother, I though, he was in a thing with another brother who was in Australia, right. and he wanted the biggest price. Right. So it was a genuine. We did pay asking price. Though. Yeah, but it was a battle between yeah. the ethics and the family side yeah. and the money maker. Yeah. And we won. Yeah. And it was a nice moment. It was a nice and moment. And we're still here. We talked about me campaigning for better broadband on the yeah. street, which I did. Yeah. Like a communications-based Che Guevara. Yeah, and anybody who left... used to watch the Shed Show will know how important that was. Oh, I left it. Well, you know when I get the bit between my teeth? Mm. I'm pretty good, mate. You are. Like, I, I'm obsessive. Annoying, I think. It's not, it's not, I don't do a yeah. good job. I think I'm more annoying. Yeah. I get in everyone's face. I yeah. emailed the MP like three yeah, times a day yeah, and I think yeah. in the end he just went, this dickhead's going nowhere. Yeah, he's annoying. And I sort of laid it on thick. Yeah. I was like, everyone's trying to work from home. Yeah. There are people, there are people isolated. Yeah. Broadband is a utility now, not a luxury. Yeah. It's an essential part of daily life. Exactly. And, uh, and open reach came. Yeah. And I got them to put it in. Yeah. I almost dug that road myself. Yeah. Proud you did well. That. Yeah, you did well Dog that day. Dog bone, Yeah. Mate. So now feel proud what's the best thing you've Community ever bought power. then best thing i've ever bought well i'll tell you the um 
Well, did the, they ask you that, or did they say like, "What's the best value thing you've ever bought?" Well, or? I think they talked. They talked about the best sort of the worst times you've been ripped off. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And what I, did you say for that? Well, I didn't have time to talk about that because oh, we didn't get that's that. A shame. But I, I, I'll tell you what, I would have talked about. Go on, Peppa Pig World. Oh, I feel like all these. No, I would say I would say more. Um, I would say more so. I'll tell you what annoys me about Alton Towers, and I love Alton Towers, but you do pay a lot of money for queuing. It's ridiculous. That's what I don't like. You pay, you're pay, paying hundreds of pounds to stand near a bin. Yeah, yeah. And watch other people enjoy themselves. Yeah. The Peppa Pig World one was a piss take. Yeah. Because you got little kids. Yeah. Do you remember? It was so hot. Yeah. It was like school holidays. Yeah. And it, what was really annoying, we got in a queue for something. We yeah. thought, just get in this queue. Yeah. We got all the way there, snaking queue. Yeah. And it was just a photograph for 35 quid with someone dressed as Peppa. I know, I know. It just, uh, I just, I feel like whenever you're at a, fe- whenever you're at a, um, a theme park with your kids, yeah. the pressure to yeah. get value for money yeah. is stressful. Like if they, when they turn around and they go, can we go on the adventure playground? And you go, you can, yeah, but no, because we're on a countdown, mate. And you can go on a playground everywhere. But we're paying £200 I think that's, for you to go on a slide. No, but I think that's what it is. It's, it's our fault. No, but you've paid a premium price to be where you are, right? So, and also you've got massive pressure. The kids want to enjoy themselves and you want them to have a good time. You've got the pressure of knowing you're going to have to queue and wait for rides. So you've got to play that out. But you're feeling annoyed inside because you're like, I've paid money for this and we're queuing. So you want to complain, but then kids like our two especially are like, oh, don't be miserable, don't complain. So you like, you feel like you've got to hold off. So you actually don't behave like you would in the normal world because they get away with this shit because you are captive, first of all. Second of all, you can't ruin the day by kicking off. So then you stick with something that in the real world you wouldn't stick with. You'd be like, this isn't on. And also I would say that, like for any other business model, you'd be like, right, you've oversubscribed here. You've let too many people in. So therefore yeah. you're being greedy. You've oversubscribed for all the rides. There's too many people to let people have quality time here. But that never stands with them because they just, they'd let, because we'll do it. We go along with it. You pay the money and you're happy to queue. Well, what pisses me off as well is there's so many things that eat into your time. Because you say, we'll get there at nine, mm. we'll leave at six and we'll do yeah. all the rides. Yeah. But then you go like, you're in the queue. I'm hungry. Right, mm. well, we're going to have to budget an hour for dinner. That wasn't yeah. in the plan. No. I need the toilet. Just piss in the, sh- just piss in the queue. Yeah. Just yeah. go in the queue. Yeah. Because there's no time to do it. No. And I, I think the another thing is that really annoys me is like they have this fast pass nonsense yeah. where you have to pay then a premium yeah. to not be a normal human yeah and that always makes you feel weird yes when you're a fast pass you know people are looking at you going yeah Swat. yeah yeah i felt like that is the closest you get to a private education yeah being fast tracked yeah live yeah like we went to this water park in tenerife we were doing gigs out there and they gave us these gold passes honestly Gemma. It's so humiliating for the people that don't have one. Oh, we had these bands on. I, that's it how I feel. I feel hot. bad. But you know what they made you do? Go on. In the fast pass gold queue, you had to literally walk alongside people queuing with their inflatables in the boiling heat. You walk all the way past them, oh, all the way that's past awful. them. You get to the top. We got to the top for these rapids. They got people out of the tube, like get out, and got us in. Oh, that's fantastic. I know, I bet you loved really it. Really enjoyed it. Do you know what did make me laugh the other Go day? Go on. Watching Holmes Under the Hammer. Oh, I love him. And you knew there. someone on yeah, there. Yeah, VJ Powell. VJ Powell. He, he used to be an auctioneer. And now he's... I was in a show with him at the Nottingham Lace Market Theatre. Well, there's always that. I never quite noticed it before. If you watch Holmes Under the Hammer, guys, you might not because you might have jobs. But... <laughs> Yeah. There's a moment when they bring the estate agent into the property. They're obviously filming that. Yeah. It's not the first time they've seen the property. Yeah. And they have to pretend that they're taking it all in. Yeah. The acting's hilarious. Yeah. I never quite noticed it. It's a sketch. I want to put it out as a sketch. Because they walk in and they go, here's an estate agent, uh, Gemma Bennett, from uh, Lettings and Live. No, what is it? Lettings from Nottingham Lettings. Yeah. Uh, to have a look at the property. And you walk in and you go. Yeah. Well, they'll have said to him, have a look at the ceiling and nod. nod, like as in I can see what he's doing here. And one of them, I saw him, he just went. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, just, you don't, that's not normal. Just look round and they go. Yeah. 
Very good. I will put this on the market for a hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. But it just it didn't make me laugh that little Holmes. I love Holmes and the I love Holmes and the I like it. And if you record that it, that guy looks like a you human. Can fast I, forward. I've met that guy. You know who? The one who Martin. Jumped. I like it. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah, I know you have, haven't you? What I was, was that? I met him at a gig. You know where he lives? Western Supermare. So why did you meet him? Because he was at a gig as one of the VIPs. That's and right. And I came up to him and he was lovely. Oh. He was really lovely. And I said, really lovely. Because he always he's, he always looks a bit disheveled. He does. He does. But he, he's, he's clearly like happy and full of yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. And I think he's done very well out of the programme. I think so. But he so. looks like he slept in his car. He sort of looks like when they go, action, wake yeah. Martin up. Yeah, ah, exactly. Here we are in, in Swindon with what? a three-bed house and we're not quite sure what they're going to do with it. Do you want another coffee? Of course I do. I've only had two hours sleep. Then he walks off again. What? He's in a shirt that's unbuttoned and he always looks a little bit he like does he's... Look he looks like he's been rolled onto set yes. through grass. What is... I like this house. What is, <laughs> what is his background? What? I don't know. I'd like to know. I do you think he I was never in saw pro- him on Zoom. <laughs> do you think he was in properties? Yeah, I think he's no, I think he's always been a presenter, hasn't he? But he does he just looks like he's been woken up, like they've gone yeah. tap him on the shoulder. And this week we're in London. Yeah. With a couple who've got some money to spend. Here we go to the auction now. Yeah. Because they do do a lot of repeating. And we've said oh. this before on the um we said this on the shed show, didn't we? The guy who gets to pick the music for Homes Under the Hammer. Is such a lucky job because it's mean? so much fun. Because they always do, 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 do. They, no, they do an obvious link to the music, don't they? So they'll say something like, um, "This this guy, uh, the, the guy who's bought this is normally a um, a fireman," and then the music will be like, da, 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 and they'll pick a burning so, some sort of song with burning in or disco inferno. Yeah, it's always like they link the music to whatever's just been said. Right. And yeah, it's just a good job. I'd like that job. Right. Picking the music to whatever's just been said. Mind you, they'd have to pay a lot of royalties on the they music. Would. Are you sure they do that? They do do it. You listen next um, time. I live in 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 Essex now, but I was actually brought up in um, uh, in Ohio. Oh. Yeah. Born in the USA. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly Born what they do. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. As soon as he said yeah, it. Yeah, as soon as he said it. Got it. Born yeah, in the US. Yeah. You can see him on Spotify. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. Olivia's bedroom last week. Yeah. We talked about the state of it. Yeah. And you said that you were going to go on strike. Yeah. And not clean it. Mm. And I crossed the picket line. You did. She Scab. left. She let, me, she let me cross the picket line. Picket line? She let me do it. Put your teeth in, love. She let me cross the picket line. Of course she did. Um, she she did that on purpose because I went up there yeah. and now I replay the conversation and you'd gone in and you'd lay down the law and said, I'm not doing it anymore for no. you. I, I, this is over. I'm not doing this cleaning I anymore. I basically had a bit of a hissy fit, but carry on. Yeah, and then, and then I sort of said, right, well, um, I walked in there and thought, I can't look at this no it no. looks it looks it's distressing isn't it it's like that program do you remember that program with neil buchanan was it neil buchanan no oh Who was it? no the one where the raid rooms and stuff oh what was it called finders keepers where they used to have to go through oh, bedrooms right, yeah. to find clues yeah in i kind of house. remember that and don't you remember at the time it's a really it's from our childhood they used to hide a clue mm. and he used to read a clue out he used to go it's wet when it's warm, but it's cold when it's dry, or some bollocks. Yeah. And then they'd go, raid the room, and they'd yeah. like a clock, and they'd have to throw yeah, stuff yeah, everywhere, yeah. and then they'd find like a cardboard fish or something. Mm. And then they'd go, stop the clock, and then they'd have to go round. Apparently, like, it, I remember it made the papers because kids were coming home from school and doing it at home. Really? So they'd be going like, Getting the mates round and be going yeah. like, let's play Finders Keepers. And so go, do you think that's what Liv's clock. doing? And so every, she's playing Finders Keepers every day. It'd be in the parents' bedroom day. and it looked like I'd been burgled. I think she's doing Finders Keepers. I went, I went in there and I literally said, this is ridiculous now. Because she's she's not even putting a it's pen really back. It's really not that bad. She, she's, but it is She's not bad. putting anything away. It's not, we're she making can't. it sound like it's It's not awful. It's not dirty. It's just that it is, it's, well, I mean, God, there must be people out there who get this. It's basically, like you say, taking Messy. off your clothes and they just land on the floor. 
It's controlled right. demolition. She literally takes her, her, her trousers or her shorts yeah. off, and they, it's like the, you can see yeah. like the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, where she's, she's evaporated, evaporated yeah. through the clothes. She'll get out of the shower. The towels on the floor. Oh, so many towels. Socks on the floor. But I mean, Scott, 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 on the Scott, side of the Scott. sink. No, no. I'm really sorry, but I feel like you cannot be involved in this conversation. Why? Currently, as we are sat here, where are your socks? On the floor next to my bed. No, nope. on the floor in the kitchen. So you must have removed them last night and they're on the kitchen floor. Where is your toothbrush? <coughs> in the cupboard. No. Nope. Where is it? On the side of the sink. On the side of the sink. So what we're saying here, here, we're seeing a pattern here. What she is, is she's her father. She's genetically she's lazy. She's her father's daughter. She's genetically lazy. You were setting a very bad example. Oh dear. Well, the thing is, though, I went in and I tidied it up and she was a bit weird with me because she was like, oh, daddy, you don't need to do this. And I think it's because she knew I'd, I'd crossed said, the picket line. Yeah, you crossed the picket line. Um, but when I do tidy it, literally five minutes later, yeah, it's a shit tip again. I think, though, this is a realisation of being a parent that it is a thankless and endless task. But I used to think... I think it's going in, though. I reckon she knows... I don't knows... think it is. No, well, but, I mean, the only test will be if she goes to university, we'll see what her room's like. I've got a feeling it'll be a hellhole, but you never like know. A you cave. never know. Uh, well, the thing is, as well, I remember um, my boss when I used to have a proper job. His son, they never tidied his room because they reached a point where they yeah, said, "They were saying we're not doing this. We're not doing it anymore. No. Now that's your room. Yeah, if you want to live like that, you yeah. can." The problem is there is I think you under- they call you bluff. They un- you underestimate your how much mess kids they can potential live in. to live in their own shit. Yeah, and it doesn't bother them. I find that fascinating. I'm almost that. To be honest, I'm almost tempted to see how, how it goes. Yeah. Do you I, admire her for it? I don't admire her for it, but I I find it fascinating. I need a wee. That's why I'm jiggling. Oh, God. Can I go? Yeah, and then we'll pick this back up. Yeah. That We're on a roll there. I know. But you were I, jiggling I'm up and down. Gonna... It was like talking to someone who was... It was like talking to someone who was drilling a road. So I am actually tempted to... Just see how messy she would go. I think you'll be, I think we'll be equally impressed and horrified. So what I do as a rule, right, when I've I've done ironing in a washing pile, as in clean clothes to go away, um, we've talked about this before, I'll divvy it all up. And then the second step is to take the respective pile to the respective room. And with Sophia, she's only six, so I put all her clothes away. Yeah. Now with Liv, as a rule, I put all her clothes away because it's just easier to do it myself because yeah. waiting for her to do it. So, But the other day when I was like tempting fate and I thought, no, let's see how we go with this. I put the clean pile of washing on her bed. She got into bed that night with the washing still on her bed. Kicked it off. And it all fell off. So that's that's where we go with this. She's ah! not going to put it away. She'll sleep under She'll it. She'll sleep around it. She'll sleep under it. Yep. She will step over it. It's insane. It's so, stairs blindness. There you go. Uh, well, the other thing as well is these, there is one area that is tidy and it's around where a computer is. So as long as you put... If you I disagree. Put, if you put everything on her a computer, yeah. she will deal with it. No, I disagree. I, just, I, I don't even agree with that. Yeah. I think you'll underestimate. I think if you let them, if you let her live in that... Mm. It will get to the point where the cereal bowls, the stuff piled behind the door. It'll be like I a hoarder's house. I honestly don't think she'll be bothered. It'll be a hoarder's. And as long as she can get to her bedroom, yeah. get to her bed, mm. and as long as you can... I reckon it'll get, come to the point where even Bob the cat will go, I am not sleeping in there. So... I am literally not going in that hellhole. Let's just say... Are we going to do it? Are no, we literally going to let it Let's just say, out there in the brew crew, there will be people listening to this who are mega tidy people. Yeah. There will be people who are in the middle of the road... Yeah. So they like it tidy, but they're not obsessively tidy. But there will be people out there who are quite happily live in mess, right? So I want to hear from these people. How messy do you go? How, how, what is the point where you go enough's enough? I think the point where enough's enough is where you see something move underneath the mess and you don't know what it is. No, because that's really, really bad. I think when you can't get in your own door, when your room is chaos, where you can't see the mm, floor. Well, no, I'm more, I'm more about this sort of, you're not a hoarder, you're not like a... There's not newspapers no, stacked No, but up. there's people out there where they'll, they'll, there'll be a point where they'll go, right, okay, that's enough. Maybe it's that, like you say, maybe you can't find anywhere to sit down anymore. 
or yeah. maybe there's no surfaces. There's no clean cups left. So I'm going to have to wash a cup. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there are people who do literally live like that. There are, of course there are. Because, yeah. But then there's a mindset of, I want to know how, okay. how do you how do you bring that mindset in Okay. let this slide because it doesn't matter. No, but here's another question. Couples, right? So we talk about compatibility. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. I think we've mentioned this before. Do you think you have to have, you have to be on the same level as the person you're living with? Yeah, you have to. For tidiness and no, cleanliness. No, I, I think you have to complement each other. I think I think there is. I think what happens is I think someone could be super tidy. Right. The other one can share their um, their the vision of being tidy. Yeah. So then that other person will drag that person along with them. Yeah. What you can't have. Yeah. Is is two extremes. Yeah. So what you can't have is someone who's super OCD. Yeah. With someone who's super OCD. Yeah. Because their OCDs will conflict. Like, do you they, think so? Yeah. Because then it ended up having a row because the tea towel's not positioned at the right height in the holder right and then that ruins the whole day or like the you know they haven't put it's like frigging misery isn't it one of the penguins isn't facing south or something right you get to that level what you what you don't want though is the extreme of two people who really don't care yeah because then you live in In hell. hell but then those people don't care they live in hell no so you sort of of, you sort of like the admission of then it's just like well mm. this is it we exist together and none of this matters as long as there's a pathway out the house and in the house then who cares who cares yeah so it's it's interesting i think there is a yin and yang in relationships and i do think that people are i think you're tidier than i am but i like to be tidy yeah that and i think that's what you need i think if you've got someone who doesn't care you were brought up in such a tidy house so tidy but i mean my mum would but that I think there's an obsessional cleaning yeah, in there. Yeah. You were brought up in more of a normal, your mum kept things tidy and clean. Yeah. But she wasn't spending all day Monday cleaning. No. But I think my mum secretly enjoyed it. Yeah. I think she quite enjoyed being tidy. Oh, Whereas yeah. I think Liv, I don't know where she sits at the moment. I no. think she's lazy. Yeah. But I think she's she also... She likes it tidy. I think she likes it tidy, but she doesn't see it. She doesn't no. it, She doesn't get a buzz off it no, being tidy. No. She just accepts it as tidy. Yeah. And then she. Yeah. it's just a blank canvas to turn yeah. into a shithole. What I sometimes... That's all you're doing. You're just giving her stuff to ruin. What I sometimes do with her is I very calmly, I'll say, right, Liv, come back in here. And she'll come in and I'll go... Right, where does that need to be? So I'll point at the towel on the floor. But then and she gets angry. No, 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 she didn't. If I'm very calmly, I'll go, where does that towel need to go? And she goes, in the wash. All right, okay, do it. Where does this need to go? No, it's like her pants and her bra. In the wash. I'll say, right, so what are you going to do? She picks it up, puts it in there. And I'll go, right, where does this need to go? And it's like um, cotton buds that she's cleaned her ears with or something and in the bin. All right, where do you need to put them? Let's do it. So I have to like methodically show her so the the trail of destruction she's left. Then I'll go in her bedroom and I'll go, right, where does this go? So it's like a dirty plate, dirty cup, um, a yogurt pot. A chewed straw. Yeah. And she's like, right, well, the yogurt pot needs to go there. And then, and I was Bits like, right, of so, tin foil. I say, so, you know, oh, it is tiring, but you just, I have to go through it with her. Can I say, at the moment, where we are in terms of the scale, mm. I think we're a salesman on a weekend break in mm. Milton Keynes in mm. a Holiday Inn yeah. room. That's yeah. where we are at the moment, where things are a little bit scruffy. It's not his room, so he doesn't really care. We talked about this last week. There's a little bit of low-level untidiness. Right. Where we don't want to get to yeah. is Motley Crew on tour. No, that's right. Where there's curtains ripped down, yeah. there's just stuff just congealing the thing is things in cups under beds that are growing and we will get there if we do not bring in some sort of enforcement the thing is no the thing is she's such a good kid and she's so kind and lovely and i would rather have that over anything else but you um, can have both you can have both. You can have kind and lovely and puts the pants oh, away. Oh, I know. I... Well, let us know. Let us know what we can do. Maybe and let us know if yeah. you're a person that can live, live with in it. hell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I sent it about that car share, didn't I? This is, it's funny, we talked about it last week, of getting in someone's car is the same thing. If you get in someone's car and it's a shit tip, you go, imagine what their house is like. If this is the car, what is the house like? Because this is the thing that they're bringing out into the world. I think there's... Well, the only thing I would say in the defense of a car thing is I think what you can get away with a car thing is like I cleaned my car, the inside of it the other day, 
spent a good hour on it and it looks beautiful inside and smells good and I love having a clean car but the thing is is that you get out your car you shut the door and you walk away from it and it's like you can even though I knew it needed doing I'm not living in it it's just every time you get in the car you go oh god I still need Mm. to do this but because you can just leave it out there and I think you walk away from it and it can get neglected for quite a long time before you snap and you go, no, this has got... But in terms of priority over cleaning your house, I think house takes priority over a car. If you open your car and rubbish spills out onto yeah, the floor... Yeah, Then you've got any, yeah. You've gone too far. But it's so nice having a clean car. Yeah. So nice. So good. I taught Liv to knit yesterday. Did you? Yeah, because she was bored. You know what annoys me about kids being bored? Because we've got this new regime, haven't we? Well, no, it was in the day this was, because we had a chill out day yesterday. We're trying to Saturday was so mental. We were so busy. And I was like, tomorrow we're doing nothing. We're not having anything arranged. So we chilled out. But of course, then in the afternoon, she was like, I'm bored. And I'm like, do you know what? I said, I'm never bored. Ever. I'm I'm never bored. What, what, What that means is... I haven't got a way of stimulating myself that isn't a phone yeah. or a telly. Yeah. That's what that means. And she did feel bored. She was genuinely like, I'm fed up with everything. She just felt, ugh, meh. She felt meh. Nadgy. Yeah. And I was like, what do you Na- want to do? And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, do you want to paint? No. Do you want to read? No. Oh, that's do you want to do a puzzle? No. Do you want to piss me off? Yeah. yeah. And everything I suggested. And I was like, do you want me to stop suggesting? No, I want you to suggest stuff, but I just don't want anything that uses my brain. I'm like, oh, uses my brain. <laughs> I was like, right, well, what about? And then eventually she went, can you teach me to knit? And I was like, yeah, sure. Did that come out of left field? Yeah. So she was, can you teach me, teach to, me knit? to knit? So I said, yeah, of course I will. So I got out the big knit, but she lasted two rows. Two rows of 15 I was stitches. Say the concentration. Ah, oh, she gave in so quickly. So the stuff, imagine what she's going to be doing then. Mm. Well, can you knit us something, Sophia? Yeah. I can knit you a scarf well, for a she, sparrow. She says, I want to knit something for me. And I was like, let's start basic. That's not how it works. Let's start yeah. simple. I said, why don't you do a patchwork blanket? So you just knit little squares. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. And I was like, right, two rows. Not even one square. Not even one square. <laughs> you tapped out. Tapped out. Is that a concentration thing or is that yeah. our daughter? Yeah, she's just she's got no staying power. Oh, mate, that's quite depressing. Yeah. Because they're not going to get satisfaction out of stuff. Their concentration span's shot. It's awful. Oh, no. Do you think she'll pick it back up? Yeah, I do, I do. Do you I know do. how I used to sit and draw on the kitchen table? She does do that, paper, though. She draws. Hours. She does draw. I'll give her that, Scott. She really does draw. My mum reminded me we didn't have a telly in the kitchen. No. And I used to listen to her. All I used to do is draw... We used to listen to the radio yeah. and I could hear when, when she was ironing. Of the steam. Tss. Yeah, I was ironing yesterday. That was my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite bleak, it's lovely. But no, it's not at all. But I think you need I concentration. I do worry about the kids now with the concentration. And we're trying to implement this new regime, aren't we? With phone off. It's okay. I mean, it's all right. It's, Is it working? Yeah, it is working. She's kicking against it? Not really, no. Phone off at 8.30, have we said? Yeah, yeah. I think that's fine. I think that's more we've than said fine. We she, she can integrate with her family. Come down and be in the bosom of your family. No, it's just about no screens before bed. Because it gets ridiculous. Yeah, that's and it's it. mindless scrolling. Yeah, I it's know. It's burning. It's, it's, do you know what I call it? junk hours yeah but it's i'm trying junk. not to be negative about what we do because this is their world we've got to but it's a shit world and i don't did want you, her to be in it did, right let me just i'm just going to read you something right so anybody out there who i'm sorry for, if you haven't got children because this but to be honest i think it's worth listening to this anyway just to even if you're just thinking about to when you were a teenager yourself so this journalist has written this as if she's a teenager right right It says, dear mum and dad, please stick with me. I can't think clearly right now because there is a rather substantial section of my prefrontal cortex missing. It's a fairly important chunk, something having to do with rational thought. You see, it won't be fully developed until I'm about 25. And from where I sit, 25 seems a long way off. But here's what I want my parents to know. My brain is not fully yet developed. It doesn't matter that I'm smart. Even a perfect score on my maths test doesn't insulate me from the normal development stages that we all go through. Judgment and intelligence are two completely distinct things. And then the same thing that makes my brain wonderfully flexible, creative and sponge-like also makes me impulsive. Not necessarily reckless or negligent, but more impulsive than I will be in later life. 
please stick with me. So when you look at me like I have 10 heads after I've done something stupid or failed to do something smart, you're not really helping. You adults respond to situations with your prefrontal cortex rationally, but I'm more inclined to respond with my amygdala, which is the emotional part of your brain. And when you ask, what were you thinking? The answer is, I wasn't, at least not in the way you are. You can blame me or you can blame Mother Nature, but either way, it is what it is. At this point in my life, I get that you love me, but my friends are my everything. Please understand that right now I choose my friends, but don't be fooled. I am watching you carefully. Please stick with me. Here's what you can do for me. Number one, model adult, model adulting. I see all the behaviours that you are modelling and I hear all of the words you say. I may not listen, but I do hear you. I seem impervious to your advice, like I'm wearing a Kevlar vest, but your actions and words are penetrating, I promise. If you keep showing me the way, I will follow, even if I detour many, many times before we reach our destination. Number two, let me figure things out for myself. If you allow me to experience the consequences of my own actions and I will learn from them, Please give me a little bit of leash and let me know that I can figure things out for myself. The more I do, the more confidence and resilience I will develop. Number three, tell me about you. I want you to tell me all the stories of the crazy things you did as a teen and what you learned from them. Then give me the space to do the same. Number four, help me with perspective. Keep reminding me of the big picture. I will roll my eyes at you and make all kinds of grunt-like sounds. I will let you know in no uncertain terms that you can't possibly understand any of what I'm going through, but I'm listening. I really am. It's hard for me to see anything beyond the weeds that I'm currently mired in. Help me scan out and focus on the long view. Remind me that this time will pass. Five, keep me safe. Please remind me that drugs and driving don't mix. Keep telling me that you will bail me out of any dangerous situation. No anger, no lectures, no questions asked. But also let me know over and over and over that you are there to listen when I need you. Six, be kind. I will learn kindness from you and if you are relentless in your kindness to me, someday I will imitate that behaviour. Don't ever mock me, please, and don't be cruel. Humour me. I think I know everything. You probably did as well at my age. Let it go. Number seven. How many of these is This there? is the last one. Show interest. She'll be 25 by the time this is finished. I think this is really important though. Show interest in the things I enjoy. Some days I will choose to share my interests with you. This is so live, isn't it? And it will make me feel good if you validate those interests by at least acting interested. One day when the haze of adolescence lifts, you will find a confident, strong, competent, kind adult where a surly teenager once stood. In the meantime, buckle in for the ride. And please stick with me. Love your teenager. Who's written that? Um, Helene Wingens. Mm. Don't you think that's good? Yeah. Because I thought, you know, there are times, you know, Liv, she gets verbal diarrhea, do not yeah. she? And she will like be telling us something. And I'm thinking, why are you telling me this? This is so... Sharing. St- yeah. It's, uh, or Same she- with her tasting music with me. Yeah. Or she'll show me something on TikTok and I'm thinking, this is fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> but she's so enthused about it. So I have to go... Oh, yeah. And and she'll say, do you get it? Do you get this humour? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great, isn't it? And I'm thinking, no, I don't get it. I don't get it. And But I want to... Isn't it hard? You know, because I've said to myself often, I don't want to do some of the things my mum and dad did. I want to be cool. I want to be... Have you said that to yourself? Well, there'll be a day where she won't ask you. Yeah, and sometimes I think, oh, I've turned into my own mum and dad again. Because I'm like, yeah, because I'm like, I'm being, oh, I'll tell you a classic one for us too. Yeah, I've got the time to think, to talk. No, a classic one you've got, and I've got it a little bit, but I think I'm a bit more tolerant than you, is that Liv loves having her music on in the car and she flits from song to song, like nobody's business. Like she won't stick with one album. It's like, oh, I bored of that one now. Let's go to, and it does my head in. I'm like, can we just listen to one song? And that's what I'm saying in my head. But I have to think, be patient. It's nice that she wants you to listen to her music. Please share in this moment of mother and daughter. And and actually, there's some of her tunes I really do like. And she's actually getting into music that we listen to, which is cool. But, oh, you know, it's it's hard work, isn't it? Constantly holding up the mirror against your own parenting. And you mustn't ever lose sight. I think that sums it up, that piece of writing. Sums up that you've got to appreciate where they're coming from and if you do 
it will stand you in good stead. It is true. I mean, it is slightly depressing that they said it's going to be until she's 25. But I do look forward to the days where the adolescent carcass <laughs> evaporates yeah. and we're left with a rational, normal, clean, tidy, hygienic yeah. human being. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a new restaurant opened in Manchester. Right. I want to get your opinion on this. Go on. I think this is annoying. Why? The new burger joint where the staff are rude and want customers to be rude back. Oh, I've heard about this already. What's your f- well, can I t- explain what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karen's Diner from Australia opened its first UK restaurant in Sheffield and it's now coming to Manchester. It's taking bookings from May the 1st. Karen is an interactive diner, an absurdly fun experience. At Karen's, you will be greeted and waited upon by rude waiters who in return expect you to give it the full Karen. Yeah. Karen's have been stigmatised. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know lovely Karen's. Yeah, A I place do. where you can complain until the cows come home because they literally don't Love care. It. You expect good fun, good, sorry, good fun, good food and a dining experience like you've never had before. Let us know it's your birthday. If your name is Karen, and for the love of Karen, don't ask to speak to the manager, right? So basically, it's it's an idea that, that that the cocktails even lean into the name of particularly into the theme with names like the music's too loud. I've been waiting ten minutes for some service, and you've just lost my business. Burgers are twenty quid, right? Oh God! Uh, I want to see the manager beef pate burger will set you back twenty six quid, Jesus. And, the, and the biscuit brisket fries will weigh in at seventeen quid. Brisket fries, brisket fries, which is fries with like like beef dripping, dirty fries in it. Oh, very, yeah, but I mean, what do you think? I'm sick of this novelty shit. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it don't do it for not, me. Do you know what's annoying about that? Is if you genuinely found a pube in your food or something, where do you stand out? How can you genuinely make a complaint? The thing is, be like. No, seriously. Yeah, th- we've been waiting forty-five minutes. I don't care. No, I know that's the theme of it, but there's this is annoying. Now. The thing is, though, it relies on people to essentially take part in role play. I hate and that, and you are not good at oh, that. Oh, it'd be my worst. So you would ever. be like, what was one of those things called? I need the name of it now. The uh, I want to see the manager. Okay, so yeah, I'll have. One of those, I want to see the manager burgers. You wouldn't, you wouldn't like go, I want to see the manager burger. But imagine if you walked in there and went, hey, how are you doing, sir? Like your moves? You've got a wonky eye. Do you want a table near the window? We yeah. can't put you there because people will see you. We're going to stick you near the toilet, you weirdo. Well, no, that's just insulting, isn't it? But that's our vibe, isn't it? Is it? I don't oh, know. I when don't does know. it become bullying? I just don't like it. I, do you know what? I, I can't be asked I, for that. I find it, I find that as an irritating, mm. as over-the-top positive customer yeah, service. Yeah, 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 That is like annoying. That is my idea of hell, that. I know. Sitting there, being on their in joke. Well, I think After just... After a while, I think someone would just go, can we just cut this bullshit? Yeah. Because it's weird and annoying. No, but I think it, it is just when they have... in When they try and do inventive names for things, I think that just doesn't work for people who don't want attention drawn to them. So I think what you would do is you would hold up the menu and go, I'll have that one that one and they'd look at you like you need to say it and I'll, I'd go no I mm. want that one yeah. that one and that one please yeah. that's what I'd do I'd just call their bluff and yeah because I remember when that, that lad used to work in the coffee shop near us and he was lovely bless him but it was suffocating is oh. how happy and you've maybe who was that he used to go hi guys oh god where was that it was a coffee shop somewhere he used to go he used to walk in and he'd go hi Guys. Hang on a minute, you've made me remember that. Yeah. Where was it? I think it was, I don't want to name it. No, I don't. No, don't name it. But no, I won't. It doesn't matter, but let me just explain. Yeah. He was doing nothing wrong. No. But what he was doing, it was too much. Yeah. Because I just want a smile. Yeah, I yeah. don't want, hi guys. Yeah. How are you today? Yeah. And then you go, I'm great. And it makes you more miserable. Yeah. Because you go, I'm fine. You get irritated by it because it catches you off guard. I said, uh, what can I get you? To? You're be like, can I get you today? You look fantastic. How was your day? You got anything great planned? I forgot all about that, you And know. I'd be like, no, nothing planned. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And he'd be like, so, I'm like, can I just have an Americano? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then he'd go, then he'd go, uh, can I get you any pastries with that? And he'd be like, oh, no. Yeah. He'd be like, that's great. <laughs> I was like, no, it's not great. Stop saying everything's great. That's fantastic. Have a wonderful day. You're really spitting it. It's horrible. I know, but but then, but then I, I think there's got to be, do you know what I think with customer service? Go on. I think it just needs to be like in the middle of the road. Middle of the road. Just like, because then <gasps> the other, the other one that's annoying. Go on. I was in Bristol the other week. Yeah. And there's too many of those hipster coffee shops 
like where the staff are too cool to work there. I know. And it's almost like, it's always the same, the top knot guy, short T-shirt, looks amazing, yeah. flip-flops on, yeah. sort of meandering around. Yeah. And then you sort of say, he'll go, mm. they yeah. don't say morning, they just go, mm. all right. And you go, can I have um, a cappuccino, yeah. please? Well, but then, what, what oh, annoys no. me then, let me just finish this. Go on. What annoys me then is you go, can I have a cappuccino, please? And he'll go, what? And he drifts off. They don't say yes. Oh, right. You just, they drift off like this. And you go, has he? Has he heard? Has he heard? Well, the thing is... And then is, he just sort of goes, it just appears, don't look weary. No, I'm just... You're as bad as they are. I'm, uh, I'd, yeah. What I was going to say, though, is it's even like, even for main brand coffee shops, like um, Starbucks and that, they make you say grande or venti or... I just want to say small, medium or large. Don't yeah. you? Because yeah, I, I end up, I I I order a medium. Yeah, yeah. I, no, don't move it. I order, side no, side. I order a medium, and I end it ends up being massive. Yeah. Or regular. That's it. That's what gets you regular. Well, they always they always offer you that regular. Regular's not, go, no, not no no small small. Yeah, because when they say regular, it still comes. Do you know what? I always find it bizarre when you go into a coffee shop and someone has that bucket with the double handles. I'll be wazzing all I'll day. Be like, How are you getting through that before it's too cold? Oh, my God. It reminds me, though, I don't like an iced latte. I don't like cold coffee. I don't think the Italians would serve it. up a bucket of coffee. No. It'd be a nice... It'd be a beautiful little coffee. Do you know what I ever coffee. see it? It's like, it's like when you see, like, cattle, mm. a piss bucket for Lorazza. cattle. It's just too big. It's like, yeah. it's like, would you like a bucket? I'm having to do two handles. I know. Like I'm, like I'm doing an ice bucket challenge yeah, on my own Yeah, head. exactly. That's too big a it's coffee. It's too big. I think the it's Italian, too big. I think the Italians will be like, I want a coffee. I don't want to get in Scott, the coffee. It's too big. It's too big. It's too big. I don't like iced lattes. No. Do you like Oh, them? I love no. them. It tastes like coffee that's been left. No. Wrong. You're wrong on this. You're wrong. Don't like you it. You are wrong and you are wrong. The reason I like an ice latte is, and what I do is I have a little bit of syrup. A little smidgen of syrup in there. Beautiful. Mm. Lovely. Um, are you ready for some impressions? Oh, yes. Okay. Saz and Steve were really, really impressed um, with was playing their impressions last week so as they were very i mean the worst one was ah oh, no i think oh, actually no. no i think looking back that was one of her best because it it got the essence of ronnie it's an s impression shouldn't be an essence no it we're was not an doing essence. we're not doing homeopathy impression right, let's see who... where you, you have a tiny bit of the impression okay and then you've got to make the rest of the impression up okay. you've got to be you right. know it's got to be nailed on well i'm afraid these are quite a lot of essence here right who's this are you ready? Is everything okay? Yeah, try again. Listen. Nice to see Nice. Who was that? Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. It's Bruce. Forsyth. It's Bruce Forsyth. Gemma. Okay. Right. There. Listen. See, that's, listen you know, to this you one. Know the worst bit was when you went. <laughs> right. Listen. It's like you were having. A, right, how about episode. this one then? How about this one? Ow, ow, George. <laughs> right, but... try again. Ow, George. Ow, ow, oh, yes, come on over. <laughs> That's a really shit zippy. <laughs> Gemma, these are not that zippy. They're not, you can't ow, do topical, George. you can't do old ones. Yeah, I can. Right, no, listen, listen. Because people don't know right, if they're listen. good or not. Who's this then? This is just cutting listen. out a whole demographic Scott, of people. Listen, listen, who's this one? Ooh, zippy. I do. <laughs> just fucking shoot just me a minute. Now. This is so shit. These aren't even. Cl- they don't even. Ooh, zippy. It's the same Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> no, chin. it's not. Gemma, these aren't good impressions. This needs to end. Okay, right. One more. That was George. It's a bad surprise. Oh, God's sake. <laughs> the unexpected hits you between the eyes. <laughs> All right, Chuck, how are you doing? That's way too deep. How is that? It's way too That's deep. That's not. All right, Chuck, how are you doing? All right, Chuck. Yeah, who was it? Silla Black. I know. But it's so deep. <laughs> you really are shocked. How about this one? Oh, my God. Don't do someone modern. Oh, Kermy. I love you, Kermy. That's not bad. That's awful. That's not bad. Oh, Kermy. 
I love you, Kermy. You sound in pain. No, I don't. Who was that? What? Say it. Miss Piggy. Right. <laughs> this is awful. That's it. I'm done. I'm out. Oh, no, I've got another one. Um. Oh, hang on. How does it go? Uh, How does it go? Uh, probably not accurately. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Homer. Homer. How are you doing, Homer? Oh, no, I thought I could do Marge. That is shit. <laughs> that is awful. I thought I could. Yeah, homie. That's it. Come on, homie. Oh, homie. Hey. Oh, I could do it at one time. No, you can't. Oh, that... Anyway, that's me done. <laughs> On this podcast yeah. I did yesterday, it was really interesting because they were th- fascinated by the fact that we are a couples podcast. Right. And uh, they were like, is that a cynical attempt to keep your marriage together? <laughs> well. 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 They're on to us, guys, because we've been doing this now. This is 29th week. So I have said we... And we did do 52 weeks of the Shed Show. And we have done however many years together. Yeah. So really... The commitment is there. But they were sort of saying that they think it's snidey. Snidey? Well, no, it was like there was a bit of piss taking. Yeah, going, no, like, but... going like, you're basically now, your marriage is the entertainment. So you yeah. have to stay together. Yeah. But what they did have, which was a great idea, yeah. is even if the marriage is on the rocks and you get divorced, keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Keep Brew with the Bennets going. Yeah. And in the Patreon episodes, we could do when you're like, you know, Patreon one. Access to the kids. Yeah. So you have like a patron and you're sat there with your lawyer yeah. and I'm sat there with my lawyer. And we're you're just saying, thrashing it out. You need Monday to Wednesday. Join us next week, guys. Don't forget to subscribe yeah. uh, when you will find out who gets the house. Yeah. yeah. No one's ever done a podcast of a marriage crumbling in real time. Yeah. So. Well, there's lots of podcasts who've like, if they've just been a working partnership and it's separated, haven't they? Has it? Well, yeah. I don't know, not many. I, thought, it's like, I always think that about Ant and Deck. I thought you said... I mean, Ant and Deck have to stay together. But I don't yeah, think... it's like a weird I thing. mean, they've been through their tough times. I don't, yeah, and but I don't they think, can't but fall I don't think, out but, contractually. Yeah, but I don't think they... You can't have... Welcome to Saturday Night Takeaway with Ant. Yeah. I don't, and Peter. The thing is... It I don't have, want Peter. It wouldn't have lasted this long if they didn't genuinely get on, would it? Mm. It wouldn't have. Yeah. So they must really, really get on. So what I'm saying is we've made and we do get on. Our own back, I mean, really. well, they were saying as well because another person on the podcast, Alfred Brown, great comedian, check him out. He he was saying about him and his uh, wife. You, you can like they're saying like um, about separate beds. Yeah, and like some couples get divorced. Do you know this? That some couples are split up but live in the same house. Yeah, I have heard Co-op. that. That's yeah. mental. How does that work? Because that's like step two and son, where you have to build a partition. You're in the same mm. house. One of you. Do, well, don't you just turn around and say, will you just leave? The thing what is. What is going on? Why are we hanging around like weird housemates with weird tension? The thing is, this must be incredibly rare. For Can't this to afford happen. to split up. No, but it must be very rare. But I think some relationships, a bit like when watching Bohemian Rhapsody and um, Freddie and his first well, true love. Well, tied back. What? Oh, you brought brought that back, yeah. Because, Because, you know, he really did love her and they had such a strong friendship, but they knew it wasn't, you know... Elton John, exactly the same. Is he? Married to a woman for a bit. Was he? Yeah. And there was a scene where they sat sat in this beautiful house, Mm. looking over these gardens, Mm. eating this beautiful breakfast, Mm. and they're sort of looking at each other. She's looking at him, Mm. he's looking at her, and he's like, Penny, pass the... Milk, please. And they're really polite mm. and smiling and stuff. And he looks at her and she looks at him. And you just know from that scene, this isn't working. No. And then they get split up. Yeah. But it's like it's like they tried. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same. But don't you think if you're living in the same house, just to the sake of... Because you, you can't split up. That's mad. That is mad. But also, you must be very lucky if you are able to come to the conclusion that the relationship's not working, but you're still good friends. Yeah. That the romantic thing's not there, or the attraction, but you still really love each other. Well, then you'd have to babysit 
while they went out with their new partner. But if you That's felt... That's madness, isn't but, it? I'm just going out with Steve tonight. Do you mind looking after the kids? No. Oh, come This is weird. Yeah, if kids are involved, that makes it more complicated. Yeah. But don't you think as well, like they were saying, because he was saying, I was saying about the, the, the prevalence of people having separate bedrooms mm. and partners sleeping separate and then you come together yeah. to be intimate yeah. and like the queen did it with philip yeah. yeah you know i think there's a big resurgence in that i think a lot of people do that yeah. and i think the only thing is then is like you i would imagine that men because they're idiots would start to embrace it and become like the teenager yeah they'd be like should you, one day you'd come into my bedroom and you'd be like why have you bought a Lightning McQueen bed? <laughs> like Toy Story yeah. duvet. Come under the single duvet, yeah. love. Don't worry about the posters. Do you know what I mean? You've not tidied your room. The men had just become... Revert back. Revert back to being a teenager. Mm, Do you know what I mean? Possibly. Can you turn your music down, John? You're waking the children. Our children, you're 42. <laughs> It'd be weird if man... Because uh, yeah. I, I think... I think a man would embrace it as mm. like, I've got a chance to be a yeah. teenager here again. Yeah. I'm going to put up posters of Guns and Roses. Do you but, know what I mean? Like, you, do you know, like, uh, the room would look like Dunelm, but yeah. the, the, your room would be like Dunelm. My room would be back a teenager's, yeah. a teenage boy's bedroom, vaping out the window. But of course, I was going to say, if you're a couple in the press or the limelight, that does make it really hard because you have to go through what essentially is a really tough time, but in the public eye. Yeah, and people want to so know. So that's where, and people are nosy bastards, yeah, aren't awful. they? So they want to know what happened, but actually I don't know if you'll ever get to know the real truth. No, like sure. I saw Paddy McGuinness and his wife were separated and I thought, I, I'm not interested in any of that. Yeah, but people are speculating all, aren't but they? But there will on, be, on yeah, of course straight away. Because it's like, because you're in the public eye, you feel like you owe people well, an they explanation. Well, were, they, were, they were doing stuff together as well in the public eye. Yeah. And so people are like, well, hang on a minute. You said you were a united front and you were yeah. all these happy families. Yeah. And then people straight away, because people are like that, they go, yeah. well, it was just a sham, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Let's just expose the sham. And you go, well, no, it's just marriage. It's just how it works. Yeah, yeah exactly. They don't have to be, if they weren't famous, this is your, someone down the road who's a plumber yeah. and it just doesn't work, you know. Yeah. But it do, I suppose the only thing is, is like you know, when you come together to be intimate, there are certain rooms in a house that you wouldn't you wouldn't be intimate in your in your child's bedroom. That's the off limits. Obviously, you know you don't want to be eyeballed by Peppa. Pig. Why have we gone from that to that? You don't want to be eyeballed by Peppa Pig. No, I don't have much. I have sympathy for people who split up when they don't have kids. But yeah. I think, come on, you can sort that out in an email. Yeah, yeah. It's an email and changing your locks, handing your keys in. When you've got kids, that's proper debris. Do you think any people get married knowing, like, as in they don't really take the vows seriously? They're sort of like, well, no, this is for now, but there's no <laughs> this way. This is for now. Yeah, but there's no do way I Do you take actually, this man? I do for now. Yeah, I don't have it's any right intention of actually staying with them for the rest of my life. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think they do? Yeah. But that's mad, isn't it, to be But do you there, think they going, do that as an arrangement or do you think that's just in their heads that they're saying that? Do you think some couples openly say, right, well, we'll get married. I mean, what would be the point in getting married if you can have an open relationship? Some people do. Some people have open relationships. Some people say, you know, when they have that list of who you're going to go off with. Yeah. You know, people say you can make that happen. But do you know what? Can I just say? Go on. I don't think it's possible to do it without any baggage. Do you not think? I don't believe it. When people say they have an open relationship, yeah. my feeling is that one party is always isn't coming off worse. Isn't open. Yeah. One party secret is like, I'm not happy yeah. with this. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I think it's the one party that's not getting any sex. Probably. I think it's the one party that's like, she's been, she's been out every night this yeah. week. I've yeah. got no one. Is it fair? Do you know what I mean? I'm sat at home watching Top Gun. Yeah. Et bienvenue au petit test vocabulaire avec Scott Bennett. Bonjour Scott. Salut. Bonjour, salut. Ça va? Oui, ça va. That's enough. Can't oh, go any further I thought than you were going to ask me back. I was like, panicked. Really? Uh, don't oh, be panicked. I don't panic to me head then. That's silly. I felt like I was in France and you don't were be peppering me. Don't be silly, love. What should I said back? Um... 
Uh, <laughs> Do an impression of a horse. <laughs> Je voudrais un euh, sugar lump, s'il vous plaît. Mm, je sais pas. I can do. I can only do French from adverts. What? Well, you only are the toilet duck. Wow. Do you Remove this one? the smells. Do you this one? Du pain, du vin, du porcin. Oh. oh, that's a nice one, isn't du it? Du pain, du vin, du vin. Bread, wine, cheese. cheese. That is France in three words. It is, isn't it? Du pain. No, du, all they would have said is, what is it? Du pain, du, du vin, du bossin. Le strike, du bossin. That is France. In La the grève. That's strike. Grève. Grève. Grève, yeah. Du pain, du vin, le grève, the arrogance. La rogon. La rogon. La du bossin. Yeah. You English pig. Uh, right, I wanna, that. I'd love to be French. Would you? For a weekend. I wish you were French. Just for a weekend. I was chatting to my friend Carolina. So sexy. Um, she's German. Yeah. So we did chat a bit of German, which was nice. Um, but she's married to her, her husband, speaks French. And I said, this is amazing. I said, does your daughter speak German and French? And she was like, not really French. She doesn't speak it at home because we speak English to each other. I do speak a lot of German to her. So she does speak and understands German well. But the French has gone by the wayside. And I just said it's really impossible to make your kids totally bilingual unless you're totally immersing them in the language all the time. You should be speaking to our kids in French. It's not going to happen. Because we're speaking English. Flush the toilet, you little shit. Well, that's in English, isn't it, in a French accent? How do you say flush the toilet? Do you want to just teach them a French accent? We could all do that. We could just go around the house going, Would you like a cup of tea? Or... Please uh, stop pouring the Coke yeah. Zero on the What party. would you like for your breakfast? Yeah, would you like to... Cereal. Cereal. Uh, du pain, du vin, du bossin. Wait, now you're going to French. I was just saying do English croissant. with a French accent. Would you voudrais un croissant, s'il vous plaît? Avec le jambon. Oh, very good. Ah, fromage. Eh, You're getting a bit leery now, aren't eh, you? Le, le, uh, <laughs> oh, he's getting very... Swambas jam. He's getting very cocky. Come on. Okay. It's drifting. Aujourd'hui, uh, l'alphabet. Oh, we've done this, haven't we? No. Right. So I'm going to test you with some alphabet letters. Keep it snappy. I will. Numéro un. E. U. Nope. E. <laughs> Numéro deux. Y. Q. No, Y. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Numéro 3. G. J. Don't talk to me in phonics. Just give me the letter. J. G. J. 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 Yeah, what letter is it? Letter J. No, it's G. <laughs> <laughs> Numéro 4. Ash. Parachutes on. Ash. 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 H. Oh. It's the only one I know. Hashish. Okay, numéro 5, W. W. Oh, well done. W. I always think of, of duvet. That is dog shit. You were rubbish. Let's just of... do the alphabet together. No. Yeah, repeat after me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, G, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. A, G, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R. Q, R. S, T. S, T. U, V, W, I, C, K, Z. You can bollocks. I'm not doing <laughs> It's a big dead. Right, we've just had a moment of panic where Gemma... Not panic, that's... I looked in your eyes, though. Can I just tell you what she did? Glazed over. She was like... This week's mundane task is... Putting out the meat to defrost. Putting out the meat. Yeah, right. How many times have you said to me, we need this putting out for the meal the next day? Yeah. And I always... Can I just... No, I don't always forget. That's not right. That's not fair. But didn't we do it once at Christmas? We needed something for Christmas. Oh, no, that was it. It was Christmas Eve and I'd gone to bed and I suddenly leapt out of bed about 40 minutes into my sleep because I'd not taken out the chicken. Yeah. And I was like, oh my, the, the whole meal, day the one meal. would have been ruined. And I never trust the defrost function on any microwave. Oh no, nobody's doing that. Because it's always partial. Well, it always makes it. me think of Royal Family where they put it put in, in the, the airing bath. cupboard. In the airing cupboard at the back. Oh, um, God. Do, you know, do you know what I quite like? I quite like the um, 
when you say you're going to have a bacon sarnie on a Sunday yeah. and you get out the bacon yeah. on the Saturday, because yeah. that's like the foreplay it is, before isn't it? the sex. Because yeah. you go like, the bacon yeah. is now being defrosted. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm stage one yeah. towards the bacon yeah. sarnie. I like it's that. Quite exciting. I like that. And when you can see, I used to remember, you could see like bacon on the windowsill mm. and you go, ooh, we're going to have a bacon sarnie in the morning. When, when nature just gently... Defrost that Beautiful. bacon. Always put a plate underneath because you get a river. And then have it. Lovely. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's a big thing. I remember at uni cooking chicken from frozen. Oh, no. Now, I wouldn't do it now, but I probably could have killed myself several times No, I over. don't think so. I think it's only that the problem is with that is that people then don't cook it thoroughly enough, mm. like through. Mm. So I think as long as your meat is of a certain temperature, then mm. it's safe. But obviously, if it has, if it's still frozen on the inside, then that's when the danger occurs. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's such a simple thing to do. And yet it's annoying having to get stuff out of the freezer. Why is that annoying? That epitomizes to me the laziness of humans. What do you mean? Because it's like, I can't be bothered to move from one room to the other to get something out of the freezer for the next day. Because I'm just like... Oh, it's what? such a to do. Well, it's, it's, you just want to be lucky what? that the freezer isn't in the garage because that's an extra barrier. Yeah, some people do. You have would, that. I would rather hunt for dinner, yeah, than get that out. Of the well, freezer. it's so annoying as well because if that's what you've planned to do for the meal, and then you get up the next day, and you're like, oh, you know, especially if you're going to prepare it before you go to work or something, but the meat then isn't defrosted. You, have you to can't go do and it, get some. and yeah, and you, yeah, and you're gonna have to plan something. Bag not only again. can you not prep ahead. You then have, I mean, to buy something else for the and meal. That's how you end up with a freezer full of meat. Exactly. That Greta Thunberg would be angry about. She'd be very angry about uh, this. But maybe the answer is be vegetarian. Then there's I was none just of that planning. Say. You can just do it when you like because yeah. the vegetables are ready as God intended. Yeah. And also, you don't really have to worry about like corn. You don't have to defrost that, do you? No. Or, um, but it, I don't know, it frozen can tofu. taste a bit like rubber. It's well, it's improved a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, so I think the veggies options now are so much better than they used to oh, be. And vegan options. 100%. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go out for Sunday lunch, and like there'd have been no option. If you just said, um, "I'm a vegetarian," they'd yeah. be gone. What? Can you leave? Yeah, because the chef's confused. This is, this is awful. What we can do is you can get. You would have just taken the roast beef yeah. and just scraped it off. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I don't know what the answer is, Gemma. You no. say it's a mundane task. Yeah, it's very quick task. Wow. Stop doodling. Sorry. This is your bit. Doobie doobie doo. This is your feature that you've checked out on mentally. Do you know what my mundane task of the week is? What? Trying to keep you on task on mundane task. <laughs> oh, because I think sorry. you even get bored of your own suggestions. No, it's a good suggestion. Is it though? Yes, it is. Anyway, so is that is that it? What? Why? Do I you, always feel. Why do you do that? <laughs> why, why are you so negative they love it when we argue no but that that puts a complete dampener on it now you're gonna have to cut that bit out is that it well who fucking says that about their own bloody features on a podcast is that it can you imagine chris and rosie doing the uh, beefs and then you turn around and go is that it um i think our freezer you have to a, cut that bit out no, i think our freezer is a bit too small no, it's fine. We bought this new freezer and you've said it's it's helping you control what you're buying because you're not filling it. Well, you can't fill it because it's not massive, is it? It's mm. a seventy thirty fridge freezer. Mm. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but I do think it's sort of, yeah, we, we're not um, buying as much frozen food. We don't buy a lot of frozen food anyway. Mm. It's just having a bit of meat in, um, ice lollies, ice cubes scratch cooked onions that's normally Lazy the staple onions. we have i think that you know uh, yorkshire pudding i remember a kid at school i used yeah. to go to school with who had Chips. grated cheese freshly grated yeah and i always i remember at the time it caused chaos at school why because he was like one of the first to do it i think his mum and dad had a bit of money and i went to waitrose or something because waitrose used to do it what? before before it became normal to have grated cheese in a bag bought grated Oh, and I remember. That he went, I don't like buying it grated. Yeah, but I remember like someone at school said, "It's funny, isn't it? What you yeah. did at school? What things yeah. kids would hang on to for yeah. being bullied? They'd be like, uh, do you know, uh, Andrew. Yeah, do you know his uh, mum and dad buy pre-grated cheese? That was a thing at your school. Oh, how lazy is that? 
pretty great of cheese. Bearing in mind that we were school kids who didn't do anything. We say. never did any grating of cheese. I don't think that would have even crossed my mind. Yeah, but it is a bit like a game changer. It's like that sort of like at the time. Oh, well, I must admit, I did see the people with cheese slices and I thought this was wizardry. What's like, this? Because my mum would never have bought cheese slices. She would have slices. sliced the cheese. Oh, yeah. But then you, well, you pay an that... extra for the slice, don't you? Then you are with a massive doorstep, didn't you? Yeah, but they sometimes came with that burger flap cheese, you know, like dairy leaf flap cheese that was in flap. little... It was in little uh, cellophane... The flap, flap cheese? Yes. Yeah, what you got for cellophane dinner? Cellophane little flap envelopes, weren't they? Yeah, flap cheese and pickle. Yeah, because yeah, you'd have to like put... It was, yeah. like, it was like getting a plaster. Yeah. It was like peeling a plaster yeah. of cheese. Yeah. Where you go, I don't know where the... Yeah. And you put it on and it just... It's so like, tasty. It was and burger horrible. cheese. I, I went through a phase of having burger cheese. Did you? Yeah. I think it's, again, the fashion of it. I went through yeah. a phase of Dunkers. I yeah. wanted flap cheese. Yeah. I want plaster cheese, yeah. Mom. It, it's bad. It's and all processed. Belt. I want baby bell. Baby bell always seems so exotic to me. I, a, I wanted one. I went through a stage of eating cubes of jelly at school in my pat lunch. No. Yeah. Can I have cubes of jelly? Because kids were eating jelly. That oh, was a thing. No. My mum was like, do you want jelly? I went, yeah. She went, it's not really very good for you. It's fine. Just have a big round tree jelly. Oh, Just bit no. like a Mars bar. Oh, No stop. wonder I was pumped full of E numbers. That's awful. That and I a can't sunny imagine that taste very nice. I, I washed it down with a sunny delight. Did I was like, yeah. Oh, God. No wonder my eyeballs were vibrating. Wow. He's struggling to concentrate. He's off his tits on Sunny D and Jelly, that's why. Unbelievable. It is. I think it's the convenience thing of frozen stuff. We don't have that much frozen stuff. No. We don't have... We probably... We go pizzas... We go meat. I do like and a vegetable. bit of fish in bread. Lazy onions, I think, is acceptable. Yeah. I think mean, chopping onions. And then just is for, No, chopping onions is for the Victorians now. I'm not chopping onions. Well, I've got too much stuff it in does my life. Make I ain't chopping onions. It's still, it is quicker, isn't it, them scratch cut onions? Yeah, I quite like feeling like a chef. I know, I know. But onions. Every I, now and again, just chop an onion. I think, though, you get like a window where you're two onions in, where you're yeah. like, it hasn't affected me. Yeah. Then you hit the third onion. And you're like, Ugh! yeah. And then the last one you're it's doing blind. Awful. You're doing blind. Yeah, just, just streaming down your With face. a really sharp knife, just streaming. It's awful, isn't it? So, what I'm saying is, I know what you mean, but this, and the fact that we only have to get the meat out the night before and we still forget it yeah. shows we are an entitled society I know. and it's pathetic it is pathetic oh dear well done though good lad why just for bringing that up okay. like your flap cheese <laughs> You've been listening to a BWTB production brought to you live from BWTB Studios. Can I just say as yeah. well, we're in a time of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We've got economic crisis going on. Yeah. We've got a fuel crisis. We've got fuel Train crisis. crisis. Uh, 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 the government, we don't know what they're doing. Yeah. We don't, none of the politicians are appealing. No. It's like trying to choose between yeah. sickness and yeah. diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. It's not a choice that we want no. to make. No. But the, you need things in your life that are reliable, that are steady, that are there for you. Yes. And one of those things is BWTB pod. Vote for us, guys, for just voting. And when I say vote, I mean, there listen. isn't a vote. There's no vote. No. You're voting with, with your, your cock ears. ears. Yeah. <laughs> You're voting with, with your, your ears. ears. And that endorsement, we're there for you. We're not political. We're not here to make money. We're here. Of course, we're not here to make money. I mean, look at where we record. We are here for you. And we truly mean that. Not these empty platitudes these politicians are. No. We wouldn't put our middle finger up to a no. group of people like the education yeah. minister did. When she stuck a middle finger up, Gemma, we would never do that. What would we do? <coughs> She's coughing because she's guilty. We wouldn't put our middle finger up. Just have a drink of water. We would put our arms out, Gemma. We would put our arms out and we would embrace our followers and our loyal listeners into our bosom. So... Into the buzzwam. Into the buzzwams, the sweaty <laughs> buzzwams. Yeah. We will bring you close and we are together. We are unified. Yeah. We're a movement. So, guys, we love you listening to the pod. If we bring in that little bit of joy into your life, then that that's is a enough. job well done. That's enough for us. Right, have you finished? Yeah. 
Thanks for listening today, everybody. Um, we hope that you have a wonderful Sunday. Yeah. If you'd like to get in touch, please do write to bwtbpod at gmail.com or you can catch us on all the socials at bwtbpod. If we put out any videos, we'd appreciate if you would share them. Also, you can find to the left of you that there is a selection of video clips and also to the right, you can see that we have a selection of um, um, audio clips that you can uh, listen at your leisure too. Also, if you are yet to leave a review on the uh, podcast, um, in, on your podcast provider, uh, then please can you do so. We would recommend that you press five star, although um, it is obviously up to you what you leave. But we would really appreciate a comment because that means that we can recommend the podcast onto other people and they'll see your comments and they'll think, geez, this is worth listening to, isn't it? Because somebody over there said it was really good. So thanks a lot. <laughs> and we will see you, hear you, speak to you next time. Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Tune in, it's Sunday morning